The half tape sugarcane workers in Khuzestan, in Shush, southwest Iran, has been ongoing for a while now, and their recent protests have really uh, been impressive and has changed the balance of power in a way you could say in, in Iran and it's just it's been a magnificent strike and protest and we've seen you know really charismatic labor leaders come to the fore uh, one of them is Ismail Bakhshi and their demands are basic and very legitimate labor demands the demands include uh, defending expelled workers uh, you know for and and defending uh, the um uh, workers' rights to a living wage. We've seen four of the sugarcane factory workers set themselves on fire because they cannot feed their families. And of course, there's also a, a huge amount of corruption and privatization. What's happened is that an industry that has been successful for decades has been run into the ground by uh, privatization. So these workers have come together to raise some of these very basic demands for bread and for uh, you know security at work and also their wages i mean they haven't had their wages paid for several months imagine if you don't have your wage paid for one month so already you've got really low wages but they're unpaid as well which makes things even worse yeah, absolutely so now um i think uh, it's important to recognize uh, the sugarcane um, factory workers been on and off in the last two years been on various types of um, strikes uh, but this round, which is started in um, early November uh, 2018, um, it captured the ima imagination of the um, Iranian society. Uh, the factory, which was uh, uh, privatized, and I talk about privatization in Iran, actually, you know, is termed as privatization, actually assigning uh, many uh, industrial sites and uh, uh, factories to friends of the Islamists. Mm -hmm. Who take up extreme loans, strip uh, um, you know, strip all the uh, uh, factory of all all of his assets. Mm -hmm. They sell it on on the market. Eventually, the uh, the the factories close down and people become un unemployed. Mm -hmm. And this is just one um, uh, one of those factories which is going on for for three years. The, uh, but the sugarcane fact, uh, factory workers have come out. They resist this. They resist this privatization and actually demanding that the wages are paid. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's, it's captured the imagination of the uh, um, uh, Iranian uh, population. And I think internationally, people are recognizing there is that sort of challenge going on uh, in Iran. Uh, let's uh, together watch this uh, 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 very brief clip um, that the sugarcane factory workers are speaking about the situation. مسئله کارگر رو حل کنن میبینی همه مقابل تو هن تو فقط کارفرما رو برود نیست خودتی تنها یه لشکر آدم از مدیران دولتی و خصوصی همه چیز توی یه جفه دارن با تو میجنگن خوابن اونی که کلید و جوری کرد کجایی شرکت چجور دادی چهار تا کارگر رفتن خودشون آتیش دادن برای یک و دیویس لعنت به این زندگی از شدت گازش کاور نمیتونیم هر بزنیم نه جلو پامون رو میدیدیم نفس نمیتونستیم بکشیم به حق چه جرمی به جرم این که به حق خودمون اعتراض کردیم این آقاین میگن هر جور که ما خواستیم شما بهت کار کنیم بمیرید خفه خون بگیرید یعنی خفه شید اذیت پرونده سازی زندان مهنده محترم شوش ما رو تشابه کرد با گله گوسفند جرم کارگر هفتپه اینه که مطالبه قانونی داره و مافیایی که تو هفته پس از مافیای ایتالیا قوی سر نماینده ها بود دیشب تا صبح تهدید کردن ولی آقا کور خوندن ما تا آخر پشت این نماینده ها بود هستیم کسی که از مرگ نمیترسه تهدیدش نکنید اسماعیل Oh, I didn't know if I
آقا همه جمع شیم یه جا برادر همه بیان برادر آقایون ما زیباترین اعتصابی رو که امکان داشته تا حالا انجام دادیم بدون خشونت بدون آسیب زدن به چیزی حتی انقدر اعتصاب ما با شکوه و زیبا بوده که مردم شوش بازاریان دانشجوها معلمی را به ما پیوستن توجه دارید دولت به جای اینکه به دان ما برسه روز به روز داره با آوردن بیمورد یکان ویژه در اول آوردن دو شوش الان هم همه رو ریخته با اسلحه نمیدونم شما چطوری به روی مردمتون اسلحه گرفتی؟ مگه ما چی گفتیم؟ شما از شما فرزند این سرزمین هستی مگه ما جازی کرد؟ اگر ما میخوایم بریم با بس نتف معمول با ماشینامون بریم جلوی فرمانداری اگر اجازه دادن کاری نکردن سوار شدیم رفتیم که رفتیم نه دستامون رو تو همدیگه گره میزنیم حرکت میکنیم میریم جاده رو میبندیم یه ذره سب کنید بدارس میخوام بیان معلمی بازاری ها دانشجو ها همه به ما پیوستن فردا هیچ کس کارت نزنه برادرانی که شوش و همه هستن مستقیم جلوی فرمانداری آقای یونه آقای یونه نیروی و یگان میشه مگه ما چیکار کردیم که شما الان از روی ما گرفتی آیا آیا ما که فرزند این سرزمین هستی و با بوجه و مالیات بیت المال همین هزاران حقوقتون تامین میشه حقوق بیت المال بهتی در که از روی مردم و خودتون بکشید ازتون خواهش میکنید با کارگر برگر نکنید اعتصال ما هم و سال ما دامیزه بذاریم ما اعتراضمون رو انجام بدیم کاری با شما نداریم آقایون سوار و ماشین هاشی درگرد نگاشته Now from the clip you can see uh, what a legitimate demand and struggle this is and how they're met with brute force and violence by the regime. I mean the regime takes the side of the uh, owners of the companies uh, and not only that but they end up arresting, beating, torturing labor activists uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, those who are at the forefront of the struggle. So we know, for example, they've arrested uh, and tortured brutally Ismail Bakhshi, who you saw in the clip, uh, and others like Ali Najati, as well as a journalist and civil rights activist, Sepi Takolian, who was also supporting the strike. So, uh, and we know about the details of the torture because after he was released, due to public pressure, Ismail Bakhshi has written an open letter challenging the intelligence minister and saying that he's been tortured and detailing his torture and inviting the minister to a public debate on live TV. Uh, absolutely, and that immediately shook uh, the um, Islamic uh, regime and all of the institutions and started sort of stepping on each other to try to save the situation. Uh, they didn't expect um, Ismail Bakhshi uh, to come back, uh, come out fighting. When he, he was released, they thought by torturing people, that's what they do, that's the tactic, mm -hmm. by torturing uh, people, uh, taking false con uh, confessions and beating them, they think they can, they can silence them. But no, Esmail Bakshi actually came out fighting and detailed his uh, uh, torture and suddenly a movement of a Me Too about torture in Iran took place and every, you know home is thousands of thousands of people who have been tortured and are still in prison being tortured uh, every day they started talking about their own experience of how they've been treated by the islamic regime and that's a tsunami of uh, 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 um, discussion and the stories and horrible stories actually, uh, actually uh, came out and that forced the islamic regime of iran to respond 
in a not so friendly way. Yeah, I mean, one of the things is, first of all, they said that they're going to investigate his claim of being tortured. And again, it's as if, you know, you have the wolf investigate who ate the sheep. You know, it's, 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 it's absurd. Uh, but also, their investigation has found that he wasn't tortured, but there was uh, some uh, attacks and assaults that took place during the arrest phase. And again, the absurdity of it. First of all, uh, the, the journalist and the civil rights activist, uh, Sepide uh, Goliani, who was there, uh, has, has corroborated what Ismail Bakshi said. But regardless, we know that torture is part and parcel of what the regime does to any dissident and labor activists as well and, and leaders. Um, and I mean, the torture is horrendous. I mean, he talks about his ribs being broken, his testicles and his left ear being damaged, the fact that he couldn't walk for several days. They beat him unconscious and then they would revive him and beat him unconscious yeah. again. And when he, and he asked for painkillers, they gave him tablets, which is hallucinating tablets. Yeah. That is sh the effect of that, after, even after he was released for a few days, he, he couldn't orient himself to see where he was. Yeah. Uh, and that took him a few days before he uh, wrote the um, open letter. Uh, it's important to uh, recognize that uh, the Islamic regime said that there's been no torture. He hasn't, hasn't been tortured again. Not only that, mm -hmm. he was to, to, to say two, two things. First, that actually he confessed that he had been a member of the Worker Communist Party of Iran. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this is interesting. And immediately WPI uh, issued a press statement that said this is not true. He was never been a, a member of our party. Um, and uh, and instead, uh, by association, he is undermining the uh, uh, the existence of the Islamic regime of Iran. And the state and the government uh, reserve its right to prosecute him for undermining the uh, legitimacy of the Islamic they, they regime They said of for Iran. defamation because he said he was tortured when he was and they could take him to court for defamation. Imagine I mean, this the, is the absurdity of the things. The presidency <laughs> of the Islamic regime of Iran. Somebody claims they've been tortured in pre prison and there's all the evidence is there. Mm -hmm. Immediately within a couple of days, they say that uh, uh, they want to take him to court mm. for making a statement of yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, exposing torture. I mean, yeah, this is they've... only in the bizarre world of the Islamic regime exactly, this could exactly. happen. Exactly. And of course, now they're trying to tie him to um, uh, Kurdish uh, guerrilla forces and saying that, you know, uh, he's a terrorist. Uh, again, the only terrorist there is the Iranian regime. But nonetheless, what's happening is they build case files on people in order to link them with something in order to justify their torture. Look, there's no justification. First of all, in a civil society, people can be members of opposition groups without being arrested, tortured and executed. And second of all, you know, they're trying to uh, uh, throw sand in people's eyes. The real issues are the legitimate da demands of the workers there. And the fact that they're questioning the Islamic system, well, the reality is that you know, that system is against their legitimate demands, is against basic civil demands, which, which is why they feel it's a national security issue, because that's their way of trying to suppress and squash any form of dissent. Yeah, absolutely. I think the core demands of um, sugarcane factory workers, issue of torture, issue of the right to organize and strike uh, peacefully, it's not only uh, of specific, it relates to a specific factory, on the same day, there were big, uh, on the same sort of month, there were big demonstrations in um, steel industry mm -hmm. in the same region, in, in different city in, uh, in, in Ahvaz, uh, in Khuzestan. Um, daily, there's this, uh, uh, strikes happening across uh, uh, industries. Teachers on, uh, on a strike, mm -hmm. students uh, in universities uh, come out in, in protest on a strike. And every single one of these point to core issue of existence. Mm -hmm. The Islamic regime of Iran is antithetical to the existence of normal existence of people. It doesn't recognize the right people, uh, the right of people to protest. Mm -hmm. It doesn't recognize the right of people to uh, association. Mm -hmm. And it actually you know, it's, it doesn't believe that people have the right to exist. And mm -hmm. that's what he calls, and, and Ismail Bakshi, 
the strike in Haftepa has epitomizes that sort mm. of challenge and, and, and the struggle that is taking yeah, place in the I, I mean, and you were talking about what the uh, Friday prayers leader said about anyone that challenges the Islamic system should be cut into pieces. I mean, this is exactly the reaction of this regime to people who are fighting to feed their families. I mean, it's that basic, you know. They talk about in the video clip you saw, the price of food changes from morning till the evening. How do people, how can people afford to, to live like that? And then they go out in the streets, you know, like people do in many countries in the world without being tortured and arrested, asking for basic legitimate demands, and this is their response. And one of the things is that the Iranian regime has tried to put a lot of pressure on half tape workers uh, not to have any contact with Ismail Bakshi uh, and, and labor leaders. And of course, Ismail Bakshi is a hero. You know, in any other society, he would be considered a hero. Here, he is a national security threat, you know. He is an absolute hero. And of course, you know, what needs to be done right now is to defend him, to defend the half tapa workers. Really, this is a fight much bigger than the demand of workers there. It's, it's you know, the demand for to live in a civil society, in a society that respects human dignity and rights. And it's a challenge to the regime in a way that really um, has has captured the imagination of people across Iran and uh, absolutely. And, and also to some extent internationally. Uh, internationally, and it, this movement is going to bring the Islamic regime of Iran to its knees, and the, clearly that's that's beginning. There is a me too of torture in Iran taking mm -hmm. place, and the Islamic regime day by day it's losing every single battle it's choosing. Yeah. So, so support yeah. support them, support Ismail Bakhshi, Honestly, a, a real hero.